I'm now going to replace this double socket for a double socket with two built-in USB chargers. These are very useful because by using the two built-in USB chargers it actually frees up the two sockets to be used for other equipment. To start off with we're going to isolate the circuit so I'm just going to switch that on. I'm now going to go to the consumer unit and I'm going to isolate the circuit. I'm now at the consumer unit. I'm going to look for the MCB that does the downstairs sockets which is this one. I'm now going to switch that off. And then I'm going to use a lock off device to lock that in the off position. And that will prevent anybody from switching that circuit back on again. So the socket tester has now gone off, so we're going to unplug that. And then now it's going to undo the two retaining screws. Now that I've done that, I'm going to carefully pull the socket forward. I'm not actually going to touch anything behind there just yet. I've now got an approved voltage tester, which I'm now going to check is working. So I'm going to press the auto test button and you can see that that is working. I'm also going to touch the probes together and check continuity to ensure that the probes are in good working order. So I'm going to press the continuity button, touch the probes together and that proves that the two probes are working correctly. I'll then just test the machine again and now that that is working we can now probe the wires behind here. So before we go on doing anything or touching anything, we're just going to probe all of these terminals. We're going to probe between live and neutral and also live and earth and also neutral and earth. And we'll just check the live again. You can see that there's absolutely nothing there whatsoever. So we're now just going to check that the tester is working again. And we'll also check that the probes are still in good condition by doing a continuity test. So we can now safely say that that socket has been isolated correctly. I'm now going to undo all of the terminals. And we can carefully pull out all of the wires and remove the socket. I've now got the old socket on the top with the new socket below and you will see that the terminals are in slightly different positions so we do need to be aware of that when we're putting the new socket in position. It is a good idea to ensure that the actual terminals are undone fully when you're trying to insert the wires it does make the job a lot easier. This is quite simple, we only have the live, the neutral and the two earth terminals to replace the wires in. So I'm going to start off by connecting up the earth wire. So I'll put that in the bottom there. And then I'll connect the other earth wire to the top. Now we've done that we just need to replace the two lives and the two neutrals. So sometimes you do have to bend and manipulate the wires a bit to get them in a bit of a better position. So we can now get the two neutrals in and tighten that up. And then finally we can place the two live wires into the terminal. It 
is important that these connections are really tight. You do not want them to work loose. Once we've done that, we're going to get hold of all of the wires individually and we're going to try and pull them out of the terminals. If you can pull them out, you've not put them in properly in the first place, obviously. So they are all now firmly fixed. We can now carefully push the socket against the wall, ensuring that you don't trap any of the wires. We can then carefully replace the screws. When you do this, you don't want to over tighten the screws. You actually can actually break the socket. So they just need to be tight, but not too tight. Now that we've done the work, we can remove the lock. And we can switch the circuit breaker back on. We can then plug in the socket tester again, check that all three lights come on, which they do. So now we've got two sockets that we can use and we've also got two 2.1 amp 5 volt chargers for charging up USB equipment.